Metal Jesus and I'm back again with another retro gaming magazine video. Now, I did one of these about a year ago and to my surprise, it was actually pretty popular. A lot of people liked it. Now, the reason why I think is because it's really fun to, to pick up old retro magazines and kind of just go back in time and just kind of get a snapshot as to what was going on at the moment. Now, to prepare for this video, I actually met a guy on Craigslist who was, he was trying to sell his entire collection. There was almost a thousand magazines. Now, I didn't buy anywhere near that many. I bought about 60. And from that, I pulled out seven that I think are gonna be pretty interesting. I'm gonna go through the highlights here. I'm not gonna show you everything, but I picked magazines from like 1992 up to 2004. This is gonna be pretty cool. Let's take a look. All right, so the first magazine I wanna show is Game Pro. This is October, 1995. Now, the reason why I chose this magazine and specifically this issue is because it is a really interesting snapshot in time. Of course, you had the PlayStation and the Saturn, the 32X and the Sega CD. You have the Genesis, the Super Nintendo, 3DO, Jaguar, Jaguar CD. I mean, who remembers that? You had the 3DO. You had also the Virtual Boy. God, it was just so amazing at the time. The Game Gear, all the handhelds. And you also had an ad for the Sega Channel. One of the great things about this magazine is that they seem to cover every console equally. Here is a Neo Geo CD, which is something you just don't really hear that much about today. And they're talking about the system specs here. They're talking about the speed of the CD-ROM drive and also some of the games that are coming out for it. It's pretty cool, again, it's a total snapshot in time where, who knows, maybe the, the, the Neo Geo CD will take off. Coming up here is an ad for a game that was already a hit on the PC, and that is Wing Commander 3, Heart of the Tiger. Wing Commander 3 and 4 are both really, really great games. Here's an ad I thought was kind of interesting. This is for the Sega Saturn, and it's got Ice Cube in it. <laughs> I'm not sure, I'm not sure why he's in this ad, but oh well. And here's an ad for the Atari Jaguar at only $149. Actually, that's probably not bad of a price. And also being advertised as a 64-bit console, which it kind of was, not really. This next magazine's also from 1995. I was not familiar with it, but it's called Game Players. Here's an ad for a role-playing game unlike any other called Earthbound. And uh, this ad's pretty funny and so is the game. Digging a bit deeper into the magazine, you come across some of the first Virtual Boy reviews. This is pretty cool to see. I'm actually a big fan of the Virtual Boy. And this magazine dedicated two full pages to some of the first Virtual Boy game reviews. So it's pretty cool to see that. Finally, at the end of the magazine, you get yet another ad for the Nintendo Virtual Boy. Again, it's so weird to see this stuff. I, I think it's because the Virtual Boy just kind of came and went so quickly. It was, a, it was a rare Nintendo bomb. And here's an ad for it, which I think is pretty neat as a collector. All right, so now let's swing things over to the PC for a bit. This is Computer Gaming World, November 2001. In this issue, they dedicate 10 full pages to an upcoming Blizzard game, World of Warcraft. Of course, this game became a huge success, but Back then, they didn't know exactly how big it was going to be. They knew it was going to be probably something special, but this was kind of unfamiliar territory for Blizzard, so it was a pretty interesting article to read. For instance, the developers talk about how they never really had an opportunity in the real-time strategy versions of their games to get deep into the stories. They always had to pack that into the manual, and this was an opportunity to tell some of the big stories that they wanted to do. Here you can see the 20 top selling PC games in July of that year. Number one is the add-on for Diablo 2, Lord of Destruction. Some other interesting little tidbits on here is number eight is Max Payne, a classic. And then down below and number 13 is one of my all time favorite role playing games, Baldur's Gate 2, Throne of Ball. Oh yes, I love that game. And then I ran across an article that I wasn't really expecting to find. It, it, it kind of snuck up on me and that was the end and the closing of Dynamics, one of my favorite developers and was part of the Sierra family. 
And even though I wasn't working at Sierra at the time, I had moved on when I heard the news Oh man, I was devastated. Dynamics made some of Sierra's best games. And this article kind of talks about what a shame it is that they closed that, that developer down. It was, it was such a bummer. I'm, honestly, I'm still kind of annoyed about it. And now we're getting to Nintendo Power. I actually bought a bunch of Nintendo Powers off that guy, but I chose issue 32 from 1992 for a very specific reason. And that is because in this issue, Nintendo dedicates 16 pages to the start of an ongoing Legend of Zelda Link to the Past comic, and it's awesome. The comic started in this issue, but ran for 12 total, and it's pretty cool to collect for. It follows basically the plot of the game, but Nintendo left out some of the details so that people would still have surprises. There were also other characters added to this to kind of help fill it out a bit more. It's it's pretty cool and it looks great. Jumping ahead a little bit, let's take a look at March 1998. This is the official US PlayStation Magazine and they are covering Final Fantasy Tactics. Right off the bat, you see an ad for EB Games and Final Fantasy Tactics. These are, these are basically cardboard trading cards for some of the characters of the game. And there's art on the front and then on the back, there's a bunch of statistics. For instance, the summoner, talks about the requirements, the weapons, their pros and cons. It's actually pretty awesome. And of course, because the issue is dedicated to Final Fantasy Tactics, here's a big section of the magazine dedicated to tactics, including screenshots and everything you need to beat the game. Now, one of my favorite sections of this magazine is actually the international section, where they talk about games from Japan. And here's this game called Bastard. I mean, that just sounds awesome. And then, <laughs> Right below that, over to the right, down below, is a game called Bloody Bride. <laughs> I, this is the first I've heard of this, and I want these games. Here's a pretty interesting issue of the official Xbox magazine. This is September 2004, where they talk about the Xbox getting dirty, essentially appealing to adults. And you'll see that they didn't shy away from that at all. Here's an article about the remake of Conquer that came out on the original Xbox. You know, Conquer was a bit controversial when it came out on the Nintendo 64, but it fit in pretty well on the Xbox. And here is a pretty big article that goes in depth with all the kind of naughty and more adult games that are coming out on the original Xbox. Now, I think looking back, a lot of these games are, yeah, they're pretty tame. I mean, of course, the, the guy game is pretty racy, but for the most part, these games are pretty tame, I think. However, back then, Microsoft was actively going after the adult market. Here's an ad for one of the first RPGs on the Xbox called Sudeki. This is a, kind of a sexy little ad here. Here's another kind of racy ad that appeared in this issue for Gamefly. And here is a fishing ad that, again, has some sort of sexual connotation, which is kind of funny. Getting back to PC games a bit, here is Computer Gaming World. This is November 1999. Ah, uh, this is such a great time for PC gaming. Look, you turn the page and you got an ad for Knox, a great role-playing game. Okay, what's on the next page? What? Planescape Torment, one of the greatest role-playing games of all time? Huh. Oh, Diablo 2? Jeez, I mean, the hits keep coming. Speaking of hits, here's an article about Halo, the upcoming bungee shooter that a lot of people were really excited about. The funny thing is that there's not much mention of the Xbox. As a matter of fact, Bungie was a Mac developer. And at the end here, there's a little article about Steve Jobs talking the game up as though it's gonna be coming to the Macintosh soon. Later on in the magazine, there's a really interesting article about 10 games that need to be remade. And this is a pretty good list, including Racing Destruction Set. I love this game on the Commodore 64. They also list Planetfall, a classic text adventure. So good. Also, Archon. Seriously, somebody remake this. All right, well, as you can see, I picked up a huge variety of magazines from that guy, and I've got a bunch more to show you. So I'd love to know what you think. If you'd like to see more of these kind of videos, please let me know in the comments below. 
And as always, I wanna thank you for watching my channel and thanks for subscribing. Take care.